please subscribe. Too long, didn't read, abbreviated TL, Dr. By internet commenters who can't be bothered to spell out all of four words, could be our new national motto, a reflection of society's shrinking attention span. Twitter's generous doubling of its character limit notwithstanding, we live in a world that tends to ignore complex ideas that can't be dumbed down to fit on a TV ticker. Which might explain why, according to one firm's research, 73% of consumers have no idea what a plug-in hybrid is. Indeed, plugins can be complicated. Consider the clarity which like its peers wants to be both a zero-emission battery electric vehicle and a range-anxiety-defeating, gasoline-burning hybrid. Its primary locomotion comes via a 181-horsepower electric motor that pulls juice from a 17.0-kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery pack. Charging from a 240-volt tap takes about two and a half hours, from a standard 120-volt wall plug it's more like 12. With its battery full, the Clarity can travel an EPA-estimated 48 miles on electricity before it has to fire up a 103-horsepower 1.5-liter inline-4, extending total range to an EPA-rated 340 miles. The gasoline engine spins the generator to provide additional current to the motor and recharge the battery, but it also can assist in directly driving the wheels, bringing the car's total horsepower to 212. This version of the Clarity carries a combined rating of 110 John electrons and 42 miles per gallon on gasoline. Modes upon modes. Now that's a long paragraph and we imagine anyone who isn't already familiar with plug-in technology has had their eyes glaze over while reading it, or just grown utterly confused. But that isn't even the half of it. The Clarity offers a choice of three driving modes, Econ, Normal, and Sport, each delivering progressively more aggressive acceleration and pedal response. Its regenerative braking system has four settings, selected by paddles on either side of the steering wheel, although none of them allows a true coasting mode. And there are a further three choices for controlling how the car deploys its battery charge. The Clarity certainly isn't the most complex plug-in hybrid in the world, only its front wheels are driven, for starters, but compared with something like the Chrysler Pacifica, Fev, which is just as simple to operate as the regular version of the minivan, the Clarity seems like a product designed by engineers for engineers. Which is odd, since Honda seems serious about giving the Clarity a mass market appeal, what with it being a true mid-size sedan with a real trunk and a roomy back seat that makes it a legitimate five-passenger vehicle. Indeed, the Feb will be the volume leader for the Clarity nameplate, which also includes battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell models. All three share body structures and similar underpinnings, with the front strut suspension and a rear multi-link setup. But the plug-in model is the only one sold in all 50 states and the only one you can actually buy, period. The fuel cell clarity is offered for lease only, and that's just in California, while the battery electric model can be leased in Oregon in addition to the Golden State. Honda has barely moved 1,000 of those two models combined this year. The Clarity Fev went on sale on December 1st with a base price of $34,290 and a long list of standard equipment including Honda Sensing Driver Assistance features, an additional $3,200 buys the leather and nav equipped touring model. But the real issue surrounding the price is whether buyers will get to use the existing $7,500 federal tax credit, which is threatened by the new tax law currently being reconciled by Congress. Honda says it expects to sell about 75,000 Clarities, all three models combined, over the next four years. Even that relatively small number could prove to be an ambitious target to achieve without the subsidy. Well isolated and insulated. On the road, the Clarity feels a lot like an overloaded Accord. Honda says the plug-in Clarity has a curb weight that tops 4,000 pounds, which makes it between 600 and 900 pounds heavier than the company's family sedan. 
While the Clarity has a premium feel to its well damp ride, the tidy handling of the new Accord is nowhere to be found, compromised by the many extra pounds of batteries under the back seat. Their placement gives the car a low center of gravity, but the Clarity feels as if it reaches the edge of its cornering limits prematurely, despite relatively wide 235-45 or 18 tires. Steering effort is low, with plenty of electric assist and some feedback, but not a lot. Isolation from road and engine noise, however, is mostly excellent, at least until you encounter a steep hill with the battery depleted, in which case the little gas engine has to rev to the sky to keep the car moving. The Clarity defaults to operating as a battery electric vehicle until the charge drops near empty, or you stomp on the accelerator, prompting the gasoline engine to come to life whereby the car works as a hybrid. But you can also force the Clarity to operate in hybrid mode, either for conserving its battery charge or for actually having the engine recharge the battery pack, but only up to 58% of its capacity. What you can't do is lock the Clarity into a true all-electric mode, as a big push of the accelerator beyond its mid-pedal stroke the tank will immediately flip the Clarity into hybrid mode so the car can make its full power. Although the Clarity is capable of hitting 100 miles per hour on electricity alone, getting there without using gas requires patience and an extremely light foot. For the most part, the Clarity delivers on its promise of mainstreaming plug-in technology. Each press of the start button resets all its settings, so despite its inherent complexity, which, for the record, we like, its favorites can be ignored by the average driver who just wants to get in and go. Which brings us back to the central conundrum of the plug-in hybrid, it's a vehicular form that fairly demands that its owners pay some attention to how it works, what with its real attraction coming from its ability to deliver predominantly gasoline-free commuting without the range limitations of a fully electric car. That value proposition hasn't changed since the first Chevrolet Volt was sold exactly seven years ago this week. The industry hasn't had much success explaining the plug-in hybrid in the interim, even as the number of FEVs on the market has gone from just one in 2011 to more than two dozen for the 2018 model year. Good luck, Honda. You'll need it.